right? Um, started off here today, just so you guys know, um, we're all aware of everything that's out there. Um, there's not anything I can comment on specifically uh, right now due to the, to the nature of how these things work, um, but definitely aware of what's out there. And, and look, I would expect um, some movement on our roster uh, over the next uh, period of time here and nothing I can comment on too specifically because again, until anything's official, uh, there's not much to say. So um, I'm, other than that, I'll let you guys kind of ask questions as far as practice goes for injuries. Uh, we'll see uh, on the report here when it comes out this afternoon. Um, haven't had a, a lot of time to follow up on a couple of things on, on the injury report, so we'll see when the report comes out tonight. Uh, we'll speculation someday when you pulled Hopkins that you wanted to keep him healthy in case something mm -hmm. was going on. Your explanation Monday didn't line up with that. Yeah. Uh, should it have maybe? No, it, it shouldn't have. There, there was nothing there. Um, there was nothing there to talk about last week. Um, he had got had had soreness, and he sat out those last two drives, and um, that's where it was. I, I don't. I didn't say anything there that was, um, you know, that wasn't what happened during the game. And, and I did not sit him. You know, he was. I was surprised he wasn't in there at first, and they told me he was getting worked on. So um, that's sort of where that landed. I, I don't. There's no regret over that or how it was how it was informed but um, that's how it happened and then this you know all the all the stuff that comes out there uh, that was not on the table at the time with this expected movement that you mentioned how do you present it to guys like Quandre Diggs or Tyler Boyd on one-year deals you mm -hmm. know who are playing for another contract um, there's two things that, that always happen in the NFL I've always believed and um, you're always building. You're always trying to win the day and win right now. And there's always a portion of, of your football operation that looks towards um, what's next and what's what's to come. And uh, you try to balance those things as best you can. Um, at the end of the day, uh, coaches coach, players play, and that's our job. My job is to coach the football team and get ready to play the Detroit Lions. Uh, the players' job is to do everything they can to get ready to go play that game and uh, try to go win it. And that's that's where our focus is. That's where it always is. Um, and then there's always these moments where the uh, you get an interjection of something that is uh, with an eye towards what's next. And um, that sometimes can be hard to, to deal with. Uh, there's a human element in all of this um, that goes that goes to the players in the current locker room, that goes to the players um, that are involved in the transactions. There's a human element to it that um, can be that can be challenging and can be difficult um, for those involved. And uh, I'm not uh, I don't I don't dismiss that. That's a real thing. And um, but our, our job is ultimately, you know, we all sign contracts to 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 play football and coach football, and that's what we're going to do. Expected moves. Just what do you consider the outlook to be for these next 11 weeks, just for the rest of the season? Oh, I mean, I, my outlook is to go try to win as many games as possible. Um, and again, that's my job. Uh, that's the team's job, and we're going to do that. And we're going to do everything we can to coach, put the team in position, put players in position, and, and try to go win football games. Um, you know, we 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 may have different players playing, but that's just what it is. And those guys have now opportunities to play and. Uh, they're going to have chances to step up and make a name for themselves as well. So, uh, look, there's a lot of guys still here that still have a lot of pride in playing football, and um, these are challenging things to, to – that when they happen, they're challenging. But I, I have faith in the, in the guys in the locker room and the players that are here. But our, our job is ultimately to, to coach as hard as we can, put everything we got in every week, and, and go out there on Sunday and try to win a football game. Contradict that idea of always putting winning first, of trying to win over everything. No, I don't think so. I mean, that's again. There's there's two factions that work at the same time. You know, um, the faction of, of the business side and trying to make sure your team is set up for the future, and then there's the the day to day. And, and we're all in the day to day right now. Coaches and players are in the day to day. I'm thinking about nothing but trying to get ready for a really good football team on Sunday. And um, that's just that's just the way it is. That's life in the NFL. That's the business of the NFL. And um, we're, we've hit a little bit of what the business of the NFL looks like. And uh, my goal and my job is to get ready to go play Sunday and try to win. And our job is always going to be to win now. That's what it is. Um, and anything else after that is, is up to – out of my control at the end of the day. As far as the receiver position goes specifically, what's your expectation for the guys that are currently on the 53? Could some guys yeah. on the practice squad kind of work their way up? Yeah, there'll be opportunity. Um, you know, I think there'll be some there'll be some opportunities for guys to to get uh, off the practice squad potentially. Um, we'll work through those as as it comes up, but um, definitely got guys that, that have played a lot for us now that are that we got to get um, get going and play better on offense with. And so there's there'll be opportunities for sure. Um, and and what that looks like, you know, I'm not not quite uh, concrete on yet. In terms of 
you know, Will, he had a good rapport with, with Hopkins. That was mm -hmm. one of his favorite targets last year and somewhat this year. How, how does that affect him going forward as you try to continue your development, as you, as you put it, Monday? Yeah, I think that that's part of that's part of playing quarterback in the NFL. You know, your faces change sometimes. You don't always have, um, you know, guys guys contracts are up, guys contracts are extended. You sign new players, and so that's there's every year is, is part of that process, and um, you have to find ways to get comfortable with whoever you're throwing to. That's part of the job, and um, I know that him and Will and and, and Hop have uh, been been a good connection together for the early part of Will's career, and um, aided in his development for sure. Uh, but that's part of playing. That's part of playing the position that you know these things change, and you have to be able to adapt. Who are your offensive leaders at this point? Uh, I mean, uh, Tony Pollard uh, certainly jumps off the page. Lloyd Cushenberry has been fantastic um, with that offensive line room. Uh, I think we got uh, with JC as he's learning and playing better and better. Uh, his leadership is growing. Um, Tyler Boyd certainly is is one of those guys that that people lean on. Uh, he's got good leadership skills and ability. He's been a captain. He was a captain on our Super Bowl team. So uh, I know what he's all about, and he's done a good job of that. Um, and then there's, you know, I think Tajay's grown as a leader. I think he's done a nice job. Um, so we, we got guys that, that know how to lead, and we got some young players that are um, learning to find their voices, too. And I think that's a positive thing. So um, I feel good about the, the leadership, and I'm certainly welcome to more of it. How important is it to you that uh, the guys – who you look to to lead produce is, is production a necessary element of leadership i think the reality of of professional sports is that that production matters um, it's a part of the equation uh, i don't think you have to necessarily be a an all pro player to be a good leader i um, mean we rely on a lot of guys to lead in that way um, but yeah the, the production sometimes cements your ability to command um, because of, of what you've done on a field but there's different types of, of leadership certainly um, and we have guys that that can produce like I think Tony Pollard produces and leads. Um, I think Tony, Tyler Boyd has produced and led. Um, and then there's you know there's guys that are learning to find leadership roles and maybe don't produce in the way that the numbers and statistics bear out. The guys like Lloyd and uh, and JC and, and Pete to some degree, those guys are learning how to lead um, from a spot where production isn't necessarily measurable. Um, so yeah, I think that it goes hand in hand. I mean, generally speaking, your best leaders are often your best players. Um, if it, if it's in a perfect world, that's what you hope for. But there's certainly avenues to lead where production doesn't necessarily be the main focal point. Obviously, the guys that are rumored to be on their way out, you didn't expect that to happen. How much did this one and five record that you guys have now, and how much did that impact the change of direction that, that you guys are going? No, it's the reality of of the NFL. That's the reality of the NFL business. And um, you know, when you're when you're in a spot that we're in, one that we didn't want to be in, didn't expect to be in necessarily. But um, when you're in those spots, these are the things that that come with it. Um, that's part of that's part of our that's part of our life in a league. And when you get to these uh, juncture points in the season and things like this happen, I mean, it's usually because you're in the spot we're in. Um, the teams that are that are opposite of our record are the ones trying to acquire players. And so that's just. That's just the cycle, and that's how it works. And, and we're in a spot right now that um, I'm trying to find a way to dig out of, but um, that's the reality of, of business in the NFL. You got through some tough times early on in Cincinnati, kind of a similar spot here where you have some young talent, and now they have the opportunity to play. How do you keep their head on straight and kind of build a new foundation, it sounds like, as you guys are selling? Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's building a new foundation. I mean, we're, we're trying to build a foundation, period. Um, but – the way that you sell it is there's opportunities. I mean, these guys are going to get chances to play, um, and and the hope and the expectation is that they they step up and um, take advantage of it. They seize the opportunity, and um, and again, they're still you know, we have a team full of guys that are still here that uh, are going to play good football, and and that's the other part of it is it, it gets magnified. But there's still a whole locker room of guys down here that uh, are playing are playing hard and playing for each other, and that's um, that's what we're looking for. So again, opportunities will arise, and and guys got to take advantage of them in the week, but do you anticipate we'll be able to do some things today? And what's the outlook a couple of days after we talk to you? Yeah, the outlook is, is Will is, is – um, we'll probably give Will one more week. We'll see how the week goes. Um, he's still in that week-to-week -week mode, and I'm not necessarily ruling him out. Um, but I, I do think that uh, we're going to take a look and, and let Mason take more reps this week to get ready to play and see how Will comes through the week. Um, but I think he's getting better every day, and he'll be out there um, doing a little bit of work as well, just working back. So um, – 
that's kind of where it stands, and there's no nothing official on that at this point, but um, probably leaning leaning towards Mason one more week and let Will have one more week of rest. Plan to give him as much on Thursday as he did last week, or do you feel that back? Will for Will? For Will, yeah. The, the plan on last Thursday was to find out for sure if he could play. Are you going to do that again, or is it going to be peeled back? Oh, it'll be, it'll be peeled back, yeah. And Mason, what, what would you like to see him do better? What can you do better around him? Yeah, I think I think we can protect him better. You know, there's part of that. I think that uh, we gave up too much, too many issues, you know, too many hits uh, at the end of the day in that game. Um, try to give him a cleaner pocket. Things that we can do to help there. Uh, I do think that uh, he played a, a found completions when he had to, and I think we can keep working on that. Uh, we can keep finding the completions. Uh, he could hit a couple of the plays that we missed. We got to connect on a couple of those plays that were available. Um, but look, this is a really, really good football team. We're getting ready to go play. We got a huge challenge on our hands. Um, they are everything that you want to be in a football team. And when you look at the way they've built their team, um, it's, it's really impressive on, on what they've done. They're sort of the model right now um, on, on how to build a team and make them a contender. And uh, it's, it's fun to see what they've done and, and the journey they've been on. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Dan Campbell uh, and his coaching staff. But um, we got a big challenge, and Mason's got a challenge ahead of him too if he's the one playing that uh, these guys are, are, are a, a very, very, very good defense. It's coming along well, and we'll see where. Uh, again, obviously, his window. This is the last week of his his window. Um, we'll have to make that decision here. I think I think Monday is the decision day. So, um, yeah, he'll he'll we'll make that decision when it comes. But he's done a good job. Does Isaiah Prince have a chance to be plug and play as early as this week? Uh, plug and play early as this week? No, probably not. That's a little bit. Of, that's probably aggressive. Um, but we'll see what we have. Uh, obviously, I've, I've had some familiarity with Isaiah. I've been with him before. He's played a lot of football for us in Cincinnati over a couple of years. He was there. Um, and so just a chance to add another player that can come compete uh, on the roster at the position. And, and so we'll see how he comes along. But I, I think this week would be uh, a tough ask. And now that you're a little bit shorthanded numbers-wise at, at receiver, where does Colton Dow stand in his recovery process? Um, he's still in the recovery process. Uh, he's getting closer. He's in the building every day. He's in meetings. He's, he's, I see him all the time. Um, he's doing well. Um, I don't know that he necessarily is ready now to, to get going, but um, you know, that's another one of the things that we'll look at uh, as, as, these, as these weeks go by and when he might have a chance to, um, to start his return to play window. Everyone you talks about the way Nick Lesko-Bikine has approached his opportunity so far. Uh, it's been great. Everything about Nick is what uh, is what he's been here for his time, and uh, he's he's knows what to do. He knows how to do it. He plays hard. Um, he's he's an unselfish player. He's just everything that you want for a, a receiver in that role, uh, where you're sort of asked to do a bunch of different things. He plays all the positions. Uh, he does some dirty work. He goes and blocks, uh, and he's you know he's got consecutive touchdowns in back to back weeks. Um, Nick just finds a way to produce, and that's one of the things that uh, you love about him. And everything I love the person on top of it, but you know, he's that he's an undrafted free agent that had to earn his way, and um, that's what you see in his style of play. And so everything about uh, his help for our offense has been major. Uh, it's been a major, major help uh, for him coming along and, and finding a role for us. And his obviously his role will, will likely increase. Talking about Detroit's offense and the creativity, Ben Johnson was another name being thrown around all offseason as yep. a head coaching candidate. What do you see out of his play design, play calling, whatever it may be, that you say, hey, this, this is why Detroit has found so much success? Yeah, Ben is. I've I've known Ben for a long time, and and he is a fantastic football coach. Uh, great feel for scheme and putting players in position. Um, they've collected quite a group of players on top of it. You know, they've they've really done a nice job. Um, he puts Jared Goff in great position. Uh, Jared's probably the most efficient passer right now in football. Um, and then they got a good offensive line that they've built over time there. That's uh, really really physically impressive. So uh, all the things that Ben does, he puts guys in position. They have all these really good players that he gets to go move around and, and have a bunch of fun with them. And, and they're all playing at a high level. And I think uh, what you see from them offensively is a, is a ton of confidence and a ton of belief in, in what they're doing and how they're doing it. And it, it, uh, it took time to get there for them. And they've done a really nice job of, of adding and building. And then when it's been time to, to go play and execute, they're the ones making plays at the end of games to win like they did last week. Uh, no, I have not. There was not anything to uh, address this morning yet. Um, so that that'll come at some point. But no, I have not officially addressed the, the team on this stuff until it, until it's all done. Isaiah and Andre, are they uh, working their way back closer? Yes, those two should be working um, at practice in some form or fashion. Again, we'll see what what they end up fully doing, but um, expect uh, to have them at practice and, and hopefully uh, have both of them this weekend. But we'll see.